Hey Stampers, Diane Damage here with DDStamps.com and I just wanted to say good afternoon. I'm glad I made it. Hope that you are out there. Um, go ahead and pop into the comments section, hello or where you're from, just so that I know that people are there. I'm going to attempt to um, keep track on my phone. I need to get my iPad up and running. Uh, I actually loaned it out to my sister for a project she was working on and I think I need to get it back just so that I can see who's out there. I think it might work better. Anyway, lots going on today. I've got a couple projects to show. I wanted to talk about um, who the who the uh, winner was from last week. I don't know where to put this. I just want you to know that that's the hostess code for the month. It stays the same the whole month. Um, and if you need to get a hold of me, you can message me on Facebook or you can send me an email at diane at ddstamps.com. I will be putting these videos up on my website. People were having some issues. Some people aren't on Facebook and they do want to know what I'm doing. So I'm going to pop these up onto, onto my website for sure. Um, and other than that, we'll just wait and see. So if you're out there, let me know so I know that somebody's watching. Hopefully you can hear me. It looks like I'm on my phone, so I must be good. Okay, so this week, we're doing a little bit of Valentine's and a, and a masculine card. Um, I actually had a home workshop this week, and these are some of the projects that I did. So we're going to use the, the Be Mine Stitched Framelits, and I'm going to actually use, this is kind of a cool set, it's somewhere here, oh here it is. So I'm just going to use this framelit, it's a little scallop part, but I will show you what the, the framelits have. So I, I cut them um, so that you can see them all. So these are all the different shape parts you get, and then you get the scallops. So that you cut out the the heart, you will get the heart plus it cuts out the inside so that you get the inside piece. I hope it makes sense, but you'll, I think you'll see it when I demonstrate it. So those are the different heart shapes. These are the hearts that coordinate with stamps that are in the stamp set, but here you can see where I stamped it in black, cut it out on the blue, and then cut it out on the white and layered them together. So you can see what the look that you get. And it has a little stitch line. And then these are some great um, detailed framelits that you get with that too. I love this piece, this heart, and then these are all the hearts that came out of there. Um, and then some florals and some little embellishments and some uh, edgelets. So this is a kind of a fun um, die set for Valentine's Day. And oh, I do see people commenting. So I'm going to tell you while I'm demonstrating, my computer is across the room. So I can see that people are commenting but I may not be able to answer you right away. But what I'll do is I might sneak over there and check, unless I can figure out how to do it on, oh, I guess I can on my phone. Okay, so I see Norma's here and Nona, Sherry, Wanda, good. Okay, so people can hear and see me. Okay, and I'm gonna use this stamp set, which is the meant to be stamp set. A couple things I wanted to talk to you about about the stamp set. This is one of our new cling stamp sets, and the cling stamp sets this is one that I put together. I want to show you though. I've used this stamp several times this heart, but just by putting it on my finger, that's how much they cling. So they're very sticky once they have that sticker on there, and you want to be careful. I had put this on my stamp um, at my workshop a couple nights ago, and I just today tried to pull it off, and I will tell you it was stuck. It, they stick. You really probably don't want to leave them on your clear blocks for any length of time. But when you pull them off, don't just rip them off because if they're that stuck, you might separate the rubber from the foam. But just lift up one corner and then pull it back gently. But they stick, and I like that about them. And I want to show you quickly how you put them together. So I used this one the other night at my workshop, and I hadn't put the sticker on it. But you will see that even without the sticker, they stick. But nothing like they stick with the sticker. So I'm going to show you how I put the sticker on. You get a sheet of stickers, just like we always have with our red rubber. And just so you know, the cling stamps come in, um, that's what's in the occasions catalog. If they're red rubber, it's cling, and there are no wood in the, excuse me, I've been kind of sick. So luckily, you're on the other side of the screen. Anyway, there are no, there, um, there are no wood in the Occasions catalog. They now come in this new cling and then the photopolymer. And by the next catalog, they'll have phased out the wood. So, and that was due to sales. <laughs> People like their clear mount and their photopolymer. So you can see how I'm lining this up right with that sticker that's on that sheet. Push it down. And then I'm just going to pull back 
the actual sheet. And then, honest to gosh, it is so sticky. I mean, <laughs> you stick it on the end of your finger and it sticks, but I'll stick it on block. And like I said, when I go to pull this off, you just want to make sure that you lift up one corner gently and then pull back. And it's, just see how much it sticks. It sticks. It's very sticky. If you don't like that, it's, if you think it's too much stick, stick it onto your fabric. You'll get a little bit of fuzz on there, but it's not going to matter because it's on the sticky part. We'll make it so it's not as sticky. And then if it gets too much fuzz on it and then you're concerned about that, you can just go ahead and wash it with a little bit of water is all you need. And that will take, take it back to its stickiness. I hope that helps. I do like these clean stamps. Um, I always thought I was going to be a wood girl forever. And then the photopolymer came out and I really like those. And then um, I like the advantage of the storage of the smaller sets too. So, and they all work great with, a, with the stamp apparatus. Okay, so I'm going to use, this is some of the paper that is in this bundle. So the, the stamp set that I'm using is meant to be, which is on page six of the occasions catalog. I'm using the bundle. So if you buy them both, you get 10% off. Um, that's the meant to be bundle. And just so you're aware, I'm going to show you the All My Love designer paper and the All My Love ribbon pack, because those are two of the items that I'm using today with my card that I make it. So this is the paper. It's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Um, and then the back side is really lots of reds and pinks and hearts for Valentine's Day. But oh my gosh, this is a good paper bag. Okay, so this is the card I'm making. And I'm going to use, this is when I start to get a little panicky because I'm not sure if I have everything. So my designer series paper is cut four by five and a quarter. And then I have a sheet of sea foam, which is two and a half by four is that piece. And then I need a piece of cardstock, which I don't, I don't think I've cut one, um, to layer it all on top of. Let's see if I've got one here in my packet of no, I'll have to cut one. So the card base, the card base is actually um, half a sheet of Whisper White cardstock. It's five and a half by eight and a half, scored at four and a quarter, and that's how you get your card base. So I can keep going with this other stuff while I don't have that card base. So I'm going to start with my big shot, and I'm going to use this little piece of sea foam cardstock. And the thing I'm going to use with this is my big shot embossing mats. And so these are in the catalog, back in the in the big catalog, back behind where the Big Shot accessories are. And this is an embossing mat, which makes all of your framelits and thinlets into embossing thinlets and folders. I don't want to say folders because they're not folders, but so you get this piece of white uh, plastic. That's one of your plates. A very thin blue foam. It's very thin. It's and then you get a thicker gray one. We're going to use these two today. Um, I mostly use this blue mat. It's not very thin. It's very, I mean, it's not very thick. It's very thin. But that's the one I use the most often. And actually, I marked mine because the directions are kind of confusing. But once you figure it out, you're going to love it. So you're going to use your Big Shot platform, the white plate, then the blue piece of whatever that is, <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and put my sea foam down, and then I'm going to take this embossing, or this die, and this die actually, if I was just using it regularly, will cut out the scallop, the stitch, and the heart, and I'll show you when I stamp the image how that works, but I'm just going to set it there because I want this to emboss that print right in that section, and then I'm going to put a clear plate over the top and run this through the machine, and it really doesn't feel like it's doing much. You can, you can kind of hear it snap a little bit, and it's um, where the stitching is. But when I pull this up, see how, you, how I've got that embossed heart in there? Um, there's a little bit of the stitching, and the stitching doesn't even go all through. The stitching just leaves bumps on the back of that. So that's how you make your um, framelits and thinlets into embossing. Um, so 
Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and, as long as I've got my big shot up here, let me grab a piece of cardstock. And I think I, I'd be so prepared, over, overly prepared when I'm doing it in my room. Okay, so here is a piece of just a whisper white scrap that I had. And I'm going to go ahead and take my um, heart and I'm going to use crumb cake this time because I want to show you a technique with the blends. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp with that crumb cake, right, that heart. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this. And so to do the cutting part, you're going to use your thin die adapter because this is a thin die. And then your plate, and then your cardstock, and then your framelit, or, yeah, framelit. And then the plastic plate, and then I'm gonna run this through. Looks like more people came on. Um, Herb John loves the, yeah, they like the cling, I like the cling stamp with the stamparatus. Okay, so when I cut this, and let me move this out of the way. In fact, I'm gonna, here we go. So I've got my heart that I cut out, and then my framelit here has a piece of paper in it. And I'm just gonna grab, uh, let me grab a scissor. I should have a pokey thing sitting right here. I need to set up my, I need to spend some time in my stamp room just organizing it a little bit so that the tools that I actually use constantly in these videos are like sitting right here. So you get that little piece of, let's see it with the stitch and the scallop, and that's just an extra piece. What I'm showing, I just wanted this cut out heart. And remember I did this with the crumb cake ink, and I'm actually going to come in with some blends. And one of the things that I like about um, the blends is that I normally use the memento black ink, but because our our inks are dye based You can use other colors of our inks with the blends and they won't bleed out And it's just nice because this actually just gives this project just a little softer tone if I had used the black It, it might have been, it seemed a little harsh to me and so coming in with a crumb cake with a with a lighter neutral is um, just gives a, a different look. So once I've got a little bit of green on there, I'm going to come in with, see, so this was the sea foam. Oh no, this was the mint macaron. Sorry, sea foam. I don't have that one yet, if we have it. And then this one is the flirty flamingo, which coordinates with the cardstock. Um, so on the back of your card of your designer series paper, there's a list of all the colors that coordinate with that paper. It's actually in the occasions catalog too. But it's nice because this card in particular really to me shows the coordination of our products. So I'm using both the light and the dark in the Flirty Flamingo, which is one of the colors in that paper bag. And I'm just gonna quickly color this. Probably would have spent a little extra time, not so quickly, no, that's good. Anyway, the heart is done, and I didn't do any blending or anything, I just did coloring. And one of the things I like about the blends is that you get that colored look with no lines. I don't know, I just, I like the, the look of it. Once I've done that, then I'm going to take this piece that I embossed, see the embossing there, and I'm going to add in some tape. See, this is what I mean about having everything at my fingertips. And I'm just going to add some tape to this part. And then line it right up with the embossed part so you can see where it goes right inside where the heart was. It just makes it super easy. And then I'm going to take the crumb cake ink again. And this time I'm going to ink up that Happy Valentine's Day. Get that all inked up and good. And just stamp it on my card. And again, just gives it a softer look. And then I'm, I would take my designer series paper, which I don't know what I did with it. It was here momentarily. <laughs> oh, here it is. And this would get attached onto this. And you know, I cut this to an by four. So it matches up. And then um, I would add it to my base. And we'll just pretend like this is the base of my card, which is just a piece of whisper white. 
So there's my card. And then um, I took some of the ribbon. So the ribbon in this pack called All My Love comes with two different kinds of ribbon, and you can see which one I've used the most. Um, they're, they're really pretty. They are, the colors of these are Flirty Flamingo and Lovely Lipstick. So you get two, I think it's five yards of each. But anyway, I'm just gonna take this um, Flirty Flamingo that coordinates, of course, with the markers that I use, the blends, and just tie that in a bow and cut it off. And then I'll add this with a little glue dot. Grab one glue dot. Add that to the back of my bow. Maybe, there we go. And then stick it on my card and attach that. But that's how quick it is and easy. But I love the look of this. I love that that the paper and the, they all, it all coordinates so well together. And I just love the soft look of the um, crumb cake ink in that little project. Okay, so the other one I wanted to show you was this. This is just a little project that I copied actually right out of the catalog. So if I pull up my catalog, let me show it to you. It's right here. They used the white almonds, chocolate coated white almonds. I made the box exactly the same as this one using that crumb cake, but I filled it with these jelly beans, these Starburst jelly beans that I found the other day at the um, store. They're all red colors. So you get all reds. Oh, which I'm dump, dumping all over. The dogs be happy. Um, which coordinate well with that lovely lipstick and flirty flamingo. I just think it's really cute. So there's a little tip for you. I'm gonna quickly let my dog out before she starts going crazy. Going? You going? You going? Sorry about that. We've got um, the guy down the street must have had a water main broke into his house. And so there's all kinds of construction going on out in the neighbor's yard and the dogs want to be out there barking at them, but then they want to be here with me too. So it's very difficult. We're having a very difficult time today. Um, let me show you a couple more cards done with this particular set. And they're actually samples that I, that I pretty much copied right out of the catalog. I thought the catalog this time around had some fabulous samples and they're not terribly difficult. So this uses that same um, die, die, and you can see where I cut the edge of my card. I used one of the edgelets. I embossed the heart in gold, and then actually just put the piece of scallop on the top of that over my card. And then tied a little bit of the linen. I love this new linen um, thread that we have in, I don't know, it's, it's old olive, I believe. And then just did a little banner. But I love this little card, just a little love note. It's kind of cute. And then this is about the same size love note, and I embossed this one too. Only this time I used just a little bit of a blender to color in some of the flowers. And then you can see the, see the little hearts on there that you can put on your cards. And I love that too. One of the things, oh, and then this last one, just a really quick, this is the, um, this is the detailed dive done with the paper, the designer series paper, and then a couple pieces of, a piece of ribbon and another piece of just designer series paper. So some just some quick and easy little Valentine cards that I copied right out of the catalog. Uh, let's see. Let me look in my bucket here. Okay, I wanted to quickly show this because I have another little project that uses this, but I can't show it today. So these are the heart epoxy droplets. And one of the things I love about the blends is that you can make your um, embellishments to coordinate. So if I wanted to have, I hope you can see this. So I can color my hearts, looks better on white, any color that I want them. Now that dries fairly quickly. And one of the things I've learned is that you can layer it on top. So if you want a darker, darker embellishment, just let it dry in between and then color it again. Well, it won't get terribly dark, but yeah, you can see. And then that little heart, I actually could put onto my project somewhere 
I won't because I don't want to muck it up. Anyway, I just want to show those quick because these are really cool little droplets that are clear that you can change the color of using those blends. I love our blends. They're one of my favorite, uh, one of my most recent favorite tools. Okay. I'm kind of just quick looking through to see. Cool. Lisa asks if I do afternoon lives now. You know, I do Lisa on Facebook. I do at 2 o'clock on Wednesday live. Um, and I was supposed to do a live last week on YouTube, but I was sick. And I didn't really think that you guys, even though you would, couldn't catch what I had, I didn't think you wanted to listen to me. So I will go back to doing my lives on, on YouTube. It's just a matter of time. Um, probably next week, maybe Saturday or, or Thursday. I need to look at my calendar again. Okay, so here's the second card that I'm doing. And I absolutely love this card. It's very masculine. Couple of techniques I'm going to show you. So what we're using is the gear to let me find all my stuff here. So this is this is part of the celebration paper that's in the little celebration booklet, which is laying around here somewhere. Just a second. Okay, so it's foil paper. <laughs> that is, I'm going to find it here in this little book. So it's right down here on page 12 of the little celebration brochure. And it's Grapefruit Grove, which is what this color is. I just think it's so cool because all the lights pick up different colors, whatever it's under. This, this makes it look just wild. And then it also has lovely lipstick foil, which is... Oh, here I got a little scrap. Let me pull it. <laughs> Here's just a little scrap of that lovely lipstick, and you can see that it is lovely lipstick. So that's one of the free things you can get. You can get eight single-sided sheets, four of each color, 12 by 12. That's a pretty good deal. I was a little surprised when I ended up getting it that you actually got four sheets of each. So I'm going to use this paper. I'm going to use a piece of crumb cake and then just a scrap of crumb cake to do a little stamping on. And let me pull out the products that I'm using. So I am using the Geared Up Garage, which is a great new set from Stampin' Up! And I'm going to show you in here where it is. So if you turn to page 43 in our catalog, in our little occasions catalog, this one, you will see it's the Geared Up Garage stamp set. And then these are the thinlets. And you get a ton of them. And they're bundled. So you can uh, save 10%. But these are the, the thin ones. We're going to use this one on the back this year. Pull that off the tape. And we're going to use this one here, this little label. But these are great because they coordinate with the stamps that are in there. So the gas can, the car, the best dad, the happy Father's Day, toolbox, all has a framelit that will cut it out for you. And then it has all these other little gears and and, and stuff to use with your stamp set. So let me show you a couple of things. Okay, so what I did with this one, this was interesting. I took one of my clear blocks, and you could do this with the Stamparatus too, but for this particular thing, the clear block, block works the best. I didn't put the stickers on here because when I went to do this workshop, I got in this set about, I don't know, an hour before we were supposed to get started. And so I just didn't even have time to put the stickers on. And today I decided I'm just going to go ahead and use it. I'll put the stickers on after I'm done. And I really will put the stickers on because I do like the claim. So I'm using the big blotch stamp, the gas can, and the nuts. And again, I'm coming in with crumb cake. And I'm going to use this as a background stamp. And so I have this piece of cards, crumb cake cardstock, which is eight and a half by five and a half. Fold it in half, and that is your regular card size that fits in a regular envelope. I'm going to go in with a little um, crumb cake ink. So I'm going to ink this stamp up. And I'm just going to kind of randomly stamp this around this card and give it, you can see it, it's just a, just a nice kind of background. Nothing, just random. Just blotches, gas cans, and nuts. Just randomly put on there. And then I'm going to set that aside. 
and I'm going to come in on a piece of scrap, and I'm actually going to ink up this Best Dad stamp. Now this one does have the cling on it, and it has been sitting in here, and so you can see when I go to pull this, i got to be pretty careful, so you just want to pull up on one side, and then gently pull it off. Um, just because it clings so hard, so much. So this one I'm going to ink up in a little night of navy on a scrap. Snap it down. This now I'm going to bring in my big shot because we're going to do a couple of cuts, and I just want to make sure I have room here. I always make such a mess. Okay, so to begin with, we're going to come in with the big shot. We're going to come in with the um, platform, the thin die adapter, a clear plate, and I'm going to line up this label. I want you to be able to see that right over that stamped image. Now I could take my chances that it's not going to move, which I'll probably do. Or I can tape it down with a little painter's tape or washi tape, but let's live on the edge. And I'm going to put this through. In this particular die, not only does this die cut out the little label, but it also, let's see if it did it. So it cuts out, <laughs> so it cuts out the inside, so I have best add. And then it puts the rest of the label inside, it's still inside the die. And I'll just take my scissors and give this a few pokes, which you could use the brush with this or a pin or anything. I'm pushing out the label. And it embosses it too. So it cut it out and then it, can you see where it has um, the embossing? So it does both. That's kind of cool. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to do the die. So on this particular one, this is a really detailed, this gear one is really detailed. I'm going to put my designer series paper up there. It's kind of thick. I'm going to lay my die down on there. Oh, wait. I'm, not, I'm wrong. Let me get it right. Let me try it again. Bear with me. I'm going to take my precision plate and put that on there. And then that. Then the paper, then the die, then the plastic. <laughs> and I'm only using the precision plate because it's such a detailed die. And I'll run this through my machine. And everybody's machines are calibrated a little bit different. This particular machine I've had since day one, since Stampin' Up! started selling the Big Shot. I don't know, I figure it's been, it's over 10 years. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but. So sometimes you need to, you know, a little bit shim or something. But I can see from the back that this definitely cut out. So I'm going to pull this off. Let me get this out of my way. And there are, you can actually um, use the die brush. I'm just going to do some poking with my scissors into these big spots. Get all those little pieces out. This will make a mess. But you could use this for confetti in the next card you make, or even in this card. And then I'm going to go ahead, so all these little tiny circles are places that you can just poke out to start, you can see how that starts to come out, and then I'm going to pull it out. And, set that there, and I just need to poke out the rest of these, but that's how you do the gear. And then there's some pieces in the middle here that are bigger. You can see where you get a lot of little pieces. But I love this with this paper. This paper is really cool too with the dyes, the butterfly dyes. And actually, if you some of the holes you're not sure, I think I got them all. You can look on the back and make sure, but I think I got them all. So there's my piece there. So I'll bring back my card. And I'm going to use, I personally like the multi use. The green glue, as we so like to call it, because it's in a tube that's green. And then I'm just going to add very little bit, little tiny drops, randomly, all over there. And then this is going to get attached onto my cart. And then, hopefully, I haven't lost my label. So I'm coming in with my label and. A little sponge, 
daughter. And crumb cake ink. So I'm just gonna take the dauber, get some ink on the on the dauber. And I'm just actually putting a little bit of ink onto this label. Number one, because it's on the same color cardstock, so I want it to stand out a little bit, and aging it with a little bit of the same ink will make it stand out. And then it makes that embossing stand out a little bit more. And so again, this is gonna go on with a little bit of the green glue. Not very much, don't have to get carried away. I'm gonna lay that on there. And then the next step, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually come in with some linen thread. So I'll just cut some off, I don't know, just enough. <laughs> it's about 12 inches, maybe a little bit more. And then wrap this around three of my fingers. Oh, I should do this first. So this little label, somewhere I have, there, dimensionals. I'm going to put dimensions, actually a couple dimensionals on here, and I'm going to pull them off. And this is going to help me keep this linen thread on my card. So I just kind of balled it up. I'm going to lay it on my label. It's going to open up a little bit, and it's going to be kind of messy, and that is A-OK. -okay. And then I'm going to take this and line it up right over that hole, and then I can trim off. I have this wild one going off on the, there we go. And it just gives a little bit more dimension to it with the linen thread in there. A little bit more manly. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a couple of rhinestones. And again, I want to show you with the blends what you can do. So I'm using the bronze blender, the blend pen, and I'm going to go ahead and use the brush. And I'm going to color some of these rhinestones, silver rhinestones. I'm going to make them bronze. So hopefully, if yeah, you can see it now. I don't want to get too close, but you'll be able to tell when I put them on the card. So what this does is it adds some bling to my card, but um, tones it down a little bit because it's bronze, but adds just enough little bling. I just think it's really fun and very pretty and easy to do. Not that this family card will be very pretty, but. Um, that paper and those and those rhinestones just add to that. So there's my cards for today. Oh, the last thing I wanted to show, I did have somebody last week ask me if I would show how I've been making these little albums that I've been making. I'll pull one over here. Here's one done with the butterfly paper. And um, it's just, I just use note cards. So my, da my daughter, my new daughter-in-law, they got married, my son and her got married, and she needed envelopes this size. And we just ordered note cards and envelopes. So I had a ton of note cards left over. So I'm going to take those note cards and I made these little albums. And so all you do is you're going to take your note cards, and this could be any size cardstock. It doesn't have to be Stampin' Up's note cards. It just so happens that I have a bunch and um, thought I would make some cute little scrapbooks. So what you do is you're going to add, I add green glue. A couple reasons I use this is because number one, it sticks really well. I need to get a tube that has some in it. It sticks really well. It's a little bit forgiving, so you can move stuff around. Ooh. So you're going to add adhesive, and then you just line up the pages of the card to each other. Make sure that they're flat. And that's how you put the album together. So what I do is I'll do that with several pieces. Green glue, add the, but you could do this with any size cardstock. So even if you wanted to make a card size scrapbook, you could use the card sizes and then just glue them together. One thing you want to make sure, and that's where the green glue comes in handy because I can move it around. You want to make sure that they're lined up this way and the binder way, okay? So that this is flat, this is flat. And then what I do, once I put as many as I want together, I will take like a block like this and lay it on top of there and leave it there for 30 minutes or so. And then you'll end up with this cute little book. And then these pages are actually, the, the, pa the actual page for this side of the note card is five by three and a half. 
And so you can see I just took not even an eighth, I like it took like an eighth of an inch off and, and just attached it on there. So it just had a little tiny thin border. So that's how I laid them into my cards. And I left the binding open because I didn't want it to tear. But it makes these cute little scrapbooks. Um, this is some of the paper that, the Valentine's paper that is even cute for non-Valentines. It's going to be a cute little scrapbook for um, somebody. I've got a friend of mine who just became a grandma. I think she might need a little scrapbook. So that's how I do it. Really simple. And then you just add your you add your designer paper, you add your stamped images, and you make a little book. Now, if you decide to make a little book, share it with me. I like to, I like to see what you guys are making. So you can share it with me a couple different ways. You can send it to me in an email, or you can send it onto my Facebook page. So cool. So I don't think I announced who the winner was. The, the winner this week was Diana Knapp. Congratulations, Diana. Let me pull out what, what uh, stamp sets. And last week's winner should have gotten their stamps by now. And I had this panic this morning thinking, I think, I, thought, I think one of the winners contacted me, but I thought I mailed it. But if you didn't get it, um, contact me. If you haven't got, excuse me, if you haven't gotten it yet. So these are the stamp sets that are available, Diana. Uh, the pressed flowers, the just because, and the hand delivered. You can pick one of them, any one that you want would be fine. How you get into the drawing is you like and comment on my video on Facebook. Because that's the only place I can really control those things. Yeah, Wanda says that Stampin' Up! did recommend that you not leave those clear blocks on your, um, on your or your stamps on the clear blocks for very long because they're that sticky. I'm just going to run through my comments here. I will go afterwards and check. You can see my phone. You can see me on video, seeing you on video. Um, I will check all the messages when I'm done um, in case there's something I need to, to add out there. So don't forget the hostess code for this month. I do give away a free tutorial. This month's tutorial uses Bloom to Bloom. And if your purchase is over $50, you get a free celebration set. And plus, um, at the end of the month, I order products and send out card kits for the tutorial so that you have all the supplies to make the actual tutorial that I sent you. And I thank you. Everybody gets a tutorial no matter what size the order. Anybody over 50 gets it, the packet and the tutorial. And if your order is over 150, I recommend that you not use the hostess code and you personally take the Stampin' Rewards, I'll still send you the tutorial in the packet. Um, I hope that's it. If you have any questions, let me know, because I'm going to sign off here shortly. I will post the cards. I know last week I said I'd post the cards from last week's, and I will actually do an album um, up on my Facebook page right after I get done here. i got to run to the post office to do a couple things, but i got to get that up. I, like I said, I was down for a couple days, and it put me behind, but... I'm feeling much better now and back at it. Know that I always uh, share tutorials almost every day on my website at www.dstamps.com. And if you haven't, sign up for my newsletter because I share in that too. Ooh, I think I got it all. Cool. Okay, looks like people had a great time. Thank you for showing up. And I will see you next week if on Facebook live. Or if not there, I'll catch you up on my website or on YouTube. Thanks, and I hope you guys all have a great day. We'll speak with you soon. Bye.